On February 15th, large-scale protests erupted in the cities of Wuhan, Dalian, and Anshan. Where a large number of retired citizens gathered in front of the local government buildings to protest against the Chinese Communist Party's recent healthcare reform policies. Since most of the participants in the rights protection movement were elderly retirees, the movement was dubbed the White Hair Movement, following the White Paper Movement that happened a while ago. In Wuhan, where the COVID-19 outbreak began. Many elderly people gathered at the popular Zhongshan Park and blocked nearby traffic, including Liberation Avenue. This caused the adjacent subway station to close and police to arrive to maintain order. There were physical altercations between police and protesters as police used force to push them back, while protesters chanted slogans like "Give us back our healthcare money," as well as "Down with the reactionary government." Some elderly individuals fainted during the protest. Communication signals were reportedly blocked, and several people were taken away by police. On the same day, similar protests also occurred in the cities of Dalian and Anshan in Liaoning Province. According to online videos, on that day, at least several thousand retired citizens gathered in Dalian's Xigang District People's Square, which was crowded with people. They sang the national anthem and demanded that the government halt healthcare reforms and return the money to the people. However, a large number of public security personnel appeared on the scene, and conflicts between them and the protesters occurred. In one video, a woman with a Dalian accent faced the police and said, "Life is really tough for the common people." We didn't die during the Cultural Revolution. We didn't die during the COVID, and now the Dalian government sends the police to deal with us. Look at the cries of the people. Look, the special forces are all here. Located in Anshan City, Liaoning Province, the Ann Steel Group was established in 1948. And it's China's first large-scale steel production base with a large number of retirees. On February 15th, many retired unsteel employees gathered near government offices to question the medical insurance issue, and as a result, several elderly people were directly put into a bus and taken away by local police. Subsequently, in the video, a large number of police and police cars appeared on the scene. And the situation became highly tense and unusual. The medical insurance reform policy opposed by the retired personnel this time was first proposed by the Chinese State Council in 2021, and has been implemented in many places since the start of this year. The authorities claim that the purpose of medical insurance reform is to improve and optimize the efficiency and structure of medical insurance funds. Here, we want to explain that China's current medical insurance system is different from other countries in that the medical insurance funds, in addition to the health insurance coordination fund, also include a personal account fund, known as a medical subsidy. Which accounts for approximately 58 percent of the entire medical insurance fund. Insured individuals can freely use this part of the fund to purchase drugs, medical care, and so on. However, the current medical insurance reform policy is to significantly reduce the medical subsidy in the personal account, and allocate about 70 percent to the health insurance coordination fund or pooling. At the end of last year. The Wuhan municipal government announced that a new health insurance reform plan, 
called the Detailed Rules for the Implementation of Medical Insurance Outpatient Assistance for Wuhan Employees, would be implemented from February 1, 2023. After the plan was officially implemented, it was widely opposed by the public, but the government insisted that the purpose of the reform was to strengthen the coordination fund, expand the scope of medical insurance reimbursement, and increase the insurance coverage and payout to insured employees. However, the official explanation failed to win the approval of the Chinese people. The most vehemently opposed issue among the protesters this time is that the personal account of retirees was credited with 260 yuan per month before the reform. But now, it has been reduced by more than half to only 83 yuan per month. Additionally, many effective medicines have been removed from the medical insurance coverage, and only the rare or less effective drugs can be reimbursed. Some people also pointed out that if the medical insurance reform is implemented, some commonly used drugs that could be purchased at pharmacies will now require a doctor's prescription obtained through outpatient visits. Moreover, the outpatient reimbursement cost must reach more than 700 yuan before it can be reimbursed. On the surface, the annual reimbursable amount is 4,000 yuan, but the actual reimbursed amount is only 1,300 yuan, and the excess cost must be paid out of pocket, equivalent to losing thousands of yuan per year. The medical insurance reform not only failed to solve the issues of expensive and inaccessible health care, but also directly reduced the amount of medical insurance funds available to the public. This will impact nearly 2 million retired individuals in Wuhan. Furthermore, there are several issues that have caused dissatisfaction among the people. Firstly, the utilization of medical insurance funds is highly opaque, with no transparency on whether they have been utilized as epidemic prevention funds and the government has never publicly released the accounts. Secondly, this medical insurance reform exclusively targets employees of enterprises, and the benefits of public servants are left unaffected. Since a large number of retirees have been affected, beginning on February 8th, elderly people have been gathering in front of government offices throughout China to demand an explanation from government officials. Retired residents in Wuhan gathered in front of the city government in the rain on February 8th to express dissatisfaction with the medical insurance reform policy. According to online reports, they demanded a response from the mayor before February 8th, or threatened to organize a Wuhan Retired Medical Insurance Rights Protection Conference and also a Wuhan People's Republic of China Retired Military Medical Insurance Rights Protection Conference on February 15th at Zhongshan Park. The notice emphasized that if the problem is not resolved by the end of the month, retirees in the city will demand the dismissal of the mayor and the director of the City Medical Insurance Bureau on suspicion of corruption. However, the government did not respond as requested and another gathering of people took place on February 15th. Protests led to a rare and prompt response from the Chinese government, which introduced a measure to improve the management of designated retail pharmacies in outpatient services. On February 15th, the National Healthcare Security Administration issued a notice requiring all regions to manage designated pharmacies and encouraging them to offer outpatient services. This is intended to improve access to medical treatment and medication for insured persons. The measure is believed to have been a response to public protests in various regions. Ren Rui Hong, a former senior executive of the China Red Cross Foundation's Serious Illness Assistant Project, revealed the real reason behind changes to the medical insurance policy. She said in an interview with Radio Free Asia that the medical insurance reform was a measure taken by the authorities after three years of epidemic control when it became apparent that the medical insurance fund is not enough. 
because most of the provincial expenditures for COVID prevention and control are paid from the medical insurance fund. Ren Hong said, China's aging population is already severe, coupled with years of lockdowns resulting in a severe shortage of medical insurance funds. In this situation, the government can only cut back on medical insurance and indirectly increase people's out-of-pocket expenses. She said that China's medical reform has always been top-down, with relevant departments negotiating and issuing documents, and occasionally issuing notices to solicit opinions, but no real changes are made to established policies. However, the white paper movement showed the people that protests can be effective. Ren said, the white hair movement does involve the life issues of many elderly people. Moreover, many seniors died during COVID not long ago, and in this situation, their most immediate feeling is that they cannot survive because their medical insurance is not enough. Since the COVID-19 outbreak in China in 2019, the Chinese government has been implementing a zero-tolerance epidemic prevention policy, including massive PCR testing and the construction of makeshift hospitals. Although no official data has been released, it is estimated that the Chinese government's total fiscal expenditure in 2022 exceeded 24 trillion yuan, with epidemic prevention spendings alone accounting for a third of the total fiscal expenditure at 8 trillion yuan. Much of the funds were used for PCR testing, construction of makeshift hospitals and other expenses, as well as payouts to corrupt officials. Recently, many provinces in China have disclosed their 2022 epidemic prevention expenses in the 2023 fiscal budget reports. According to China's Caixin Media, 17 out of 31 provinces and cities in China have published their 2022 epidemic prevention expenses, ranging from 1 billion yuan to tens of billions. Guangdong topped the list with 71.14 billion yuan, followed by Zhejiang with 43.51 billion yuan, Beijing was nearly 30 billion yuan, Shanghai was 16.77 billion yuan, and Shanxi was 19 billion yuan. The makeshift hospitals that have been built at great cost across the country have been abandoned one after another. For example, the one completed in Guangzhou at the end of November 2022, which could accommodate 80,000 people for isolation, covered an area of about 814,600 square meters and had over 78,000 isolation beds. However, it was abandoned when the Chinese government abandoned its zero-tolerance epidemic prevention policy in early December. In addition, the government of Mingquan County in Henan province, which was once ranked last in comprehensive economic strengths among counties in the province, invested 250 million yuan to build a 10,000 square meter makeshift hospital, with an average cost of 25,000 yuan per square meter. Yet, this project was cancelled in December last year with the change in government policy. Amidst the general economic decline, the massive spending on COVID control is proving difficult for local governments to sustain. In 1994, the CCP implemented a tax reform that divided tax revenue into central taxes, local taxes, and shared central local taxes. However, this fiscal system cannot always provide consistent revenue flow at a local level. For example, while the majority of local fiscal revenue is transferred to the central government, local governments are responsible for payments related to social security, such as education, health care, and elderly care, which directly affect the rights and interests of the people. According to Voice of America, the economic cost of China's large-scale zero-COVID policy implementation over the past three years has shaken the financial foundations of local governments. Prior to the National Legislative Congress of the CCP's central government in March, 
the policy goals and budget plans for 2023 announced by local governments in China also highlighted the enormous economic pressure faced at a local level. The report also pointed out that in addition to the sharp rise in spending, local governments in China are faced with a rapid contraction of income, as well as a crisis in the real estate industry that has led to a sharp decline in land sales revenue. Some local governments have even reduced taxes for enterprises to help them cope with economic slowdown. In response, Craig Singleton, a China expert at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, pointed out that the CCP's long-standing costly zero-COVID policy has already dealt a heavy blow to the Chinese economy, causing chaos in China's public finances. He said China's runaway local debt poses a serious threat to the country's overall economic health and will weigh heavily on China's still nascent recovery. On December 7th last year, the CCP officially launched the 10 new measures to fully relax epidemic prevention, attempting to stimulate the economy by issuing bonds. However, the result seems to have further worsened the local fiscal situation. Economists warn that the debt sustainability of China's local governments is continuously declining.